uh, wa siku ya leo. Welcome, Mr. Thank Jonathan. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. Praise God. Uh, glory to God. Welcome. <laughs> Amen. <Thank> you. <laughs> uh, maybe you can start by telling the viewers your name, uh, sure. uh, where you're coming from, and what you're doing. Let Kenya. me do that. Let me introduce myself. All I'm right. Jonathan O'Toole. Um, I'm with Project C, which is a project of fearless and cherished foundation. It's a local NGO founded by an Akuru Kenyan citizen here, my friend Aljus Kasimbeli. And Project C is a a project of that NGO, and Project C is Project SEE, -E, which is an acronym for Stop Exporting Evil, specifically, specifically the evil of abortion. And so uh, you're, you're going to see here in a moment these children we're holding, uh, which are on the table here. They are um, three-dimensional models of babies in the womb from the first trimester all the way through the end of the second trimester up to uh, almost ready to be born in the third trimester. And what specifically I'm here to do, and what we're here to do this morning, is to give a voice to these voiceless children. Mm -hmm. Because they can't speak from the womb, and they're being killed by abortion. Let me tell you, it's in the news every week in Kenya. They're being killed. Very innocent, very defenseless, and if we don't give them a voice, if you don't give them a voice, mm -hmm. and if I don't, they have no voice. So I have here also a poster. I am a person. And this child, this is actually a photograph, a real photograph, mm -hmm. not a drawing, not a Photoshop, mm -hmm. a real photograph within the womb. That's the technology they have these days. They can actually take a picture in the womb. This is only seven weeks from conception. I am a person. And we're going to talk about the significance of these words. Uh, no pun intended, these words, I am a person, are, these words are pregnant with meaning and with significance. And we're going to talk about that now. Mm -hmm. The child you see depicted here, seven weeks, less than two months from conception, would be smaller than this one, which is 11, an actual scale model of a child three-dimensionally at 11 weeks. My point is the child you see in this picture would actually be much smaller even than this child you're seeing here. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about the humanity, but more importantly than that, I want you to mark this in your minds, the personhood, the personhood of mm -hmm. these children mm -hmm. in the womb. Does that oh, make sense? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, if we begin with a conversation, what exactly sure. is abortion? Okay, abortion mm -hmm. is, okay, in my book it is murder. It, mm -hmm. is, it is the murder of an innocent human being. Mm -hmm. So I would expand abortion to say even if, if someone murdered me mm -hmm. because he didn't like the way I looked or he was, had a grudge against me, that would be, uh, let's say, a postnatal abortion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it sounds like a joke, but that's true. Uh, so. But abortion is normally used to talk about the killing of the child before mm -hmm. birth, the antenatal human being. Mm -hmm. And I want to emphasize the personhood of that child. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about abortion, it's, it's kind of like a way of smoothing over something very violent, mm -hmm. something very cruel. Mm -hmm. As Christians, maybe there's some non-Christians listening, but for those who are Christians especially, we believe in something called, all Christians, something called the doctrine of the incarnation. Mm -hmm. It's true, isn't yes. it? I think all Christians should have heard of that doctrine. Mm -hmm. It means that God, whom the New Testament calls the second Adam, Jesus mm -hmm. Christ, the mm -hmm. second person of the Trinity, mm -hmm. St. Paul calls him the second Adam. Mm -hmm. The first Adam, whom you're descended from, all human beings are descended from Adam, mm -hmm. right? He was created as a fully formed, mature human man, mm -hmm. right? And yes. then Eve was created mm -hmm. from his womb, mm -hmm. from his, not womb, but his rib. But the second Adam, Jesus Christ did not come as a fully formed man, a fully grown man. Instead, the egg of Mary, not by any sexual relations, not by the work of any man, but was fertilized, as Christians know, and as we've been taught by the Gospels, by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so, God specifically is telling us something, that these children in the womb are in the same form that God was not ashamed to be in. Mm -hmm. In other words, that even that single cell of Mary, that ovum, which came from her ovaries, that mm -hmm. egg, became God. Through a miracle of God, mm -hmm. it became God. So even at that very, 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 very early stage of fertilization, if there was any doubt before, mm -hmm. there's no, now, since the day, time of the incarnation, there's absolutely no doubt mm -hmm. that that person See, even from a single cell, the moment of fertilization <coughs> is a human being and a person 
with a unique identity mm -hmm. as a human, just mm -hmm. like you, just yes. like me. Mm -hmm. All the characteristics of that person are inside the DNA. Nowadays, we know because of DNA over the past 70 years, mm -hmm. 60 years, since uh, Francis and Crick discovered the DNA uh, structure. Now we know that even from that moment of conception when the um, sperm joins, joins the egg and those alleles, they're called alleles, but when they line up, even though you can't see them yet, even the shape of your nose, the shape of my nose, the color of your eyes, everything is there. It's just growing from mm -hmm. that point forward. In a court of law, like let's say there was a murder case, in many murder cases around the world today, they're using DNA, DNA to prove that someone was at point A to point B, mm -hmm. or that the criminal was there committing the murder, or that the victim was inside this car. Mm -hmm. You get my point? Yes. All of that DNA, 100% of that structure, mm -hmm. from the moment of the conception of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and from your conception, and from my conception, was fully present mm -hmm. from that moment of fertilization. So the dignity oh. of that person, mm -hmm. and the problem is Satan has seen, let me talk about Satan for a moment. Satan has seen the weak point. Mm -hmm. Satan always feels around and he wants to attack the body of Christ and attack the word of God and attack the people made in God's image at the weakest point he can find. You get my point? Mm -hmm. And because these children are hidden in the womb, we don't see them day by day by day. Mm -hmm. They haven't come out yet. Yes. Because they don't have a voice unless we give them a voice, mm -hmm. right? Because they don't have those things, Satan said, aha. And on top of that, because so many young women, especially in this society, one of the evils of society is, mm -hmm. that, is that women often get put in a position by careless men mm -hmm. where they're carrying a human being made in the image of God mm -hmm. and they've been abandoned, mm -hmm. abandoned by the father of that child in many cases. And then the social pressure begins to mount and all the stress is coming down mm -hmm. on this young woman, whether she's 12 years old mm -hmm. or whether she's 40, 40, even 40, even grown women yes. can be under extreme pressure. Mm -hmm. And so Satan is aware of that pressure and Satan hates women. Mm -hmm. He hates the womb of a woman, mm -hmm. especially because his defeat through Jesus Christ came through the womb of a woman. Are you kidding me? Yes. So that's why he's targeted there. Mm -hmm. And that's why as the body of Christ, let me tell you, your body or my body, I'm an individual human being. If I come under attack by a wild dog on the street, or by a thug, or by someone who wants to mug me. Mm -hmm. Let's say that dog comes up to me, and he starts to bite me, and he goes for my most tender members, like maybe the groin, mm -hmm. or my throat. All my other members, if I'm not crazy, all my other members, my hands, my legs, my knees, I'm going to go up to try to block that dog. You get my point? Yes. I'm going to try to cover my most defenseless parts, mm -hmm. my neck, mm -hmm. my groin. If we're in the same body, what I'm saying is if we're in the same body as these children, mm -hmm. if they are members of the body of Christ, and we must presume because they're innocent, isn't it? Yes. They're very innocent. Mm -hmm. So if we're in the same body as them and they're under attack through this thing called abortion, mm -hmm. what it really is is infanticide. What it really is is actually a form of genocide. Mm -hmm. When they're under attack, if we don't come to their defense, it's like that dog is attacking my body. I say, this is my body, mm -hmm. and I just stand there, mm -hmm. and I open up, and I let the dog chew up my most tender parts of my body. Mm -hmm. That is nonsense. If someone saw me do that, you might say I'm crazy. Yeah, right? sure. Yeah. These are the most defenseless members of the body of Christ, and mm -hmm. we have to defend them. Wow. <clears throat> Maybe let's talk about uh, the tubal pregnancies and ectopic mm -hmm. pregnancies yes. because I know uh, most of the time uh, it's the mother who is in danger Very when maybe much. it's an ectopic pregnancy or a tubal pregnancy. Do we still regard them as uh, abortion? I wouldn't use, I wouldn't use that word, mm -hmm. uh, abortion. Maybe technically you could make a case that that would be an abortion, but a tubal pregnancy mm -hmm. is something different. The doctor is, does not have a goal of killing that child. Mm -hmm. That, and let me explain for the sake of the viewers, uh, an ectopic or a tubal pregnancy mm -hmm. is where the eggs which have descended from the fallopian tube for one reason or another, probably no fault at all of the woman, uh, but the egg has not descended all the way from the tube and is instead fertilized and instead of implanting in, in the walls of the uterus, mm -hmm. that uh, fertilized egg by mistake implants in the fallopian tubes. Mm -hmm. I know you know, but for yes. the sake of the viewers. Mm -hmm. So now that child begins growing in the wrong place. It's just like if you, if, if you saw there was a child 
on the train tracks, okay? Mm -hmm. And the train is coming. And it's too late to remove that child. And let's say the train operator has the ability to take another track. You get my point? Mm -hmm. But if he takes another track, all the passengers on that train can die. This is an analogy I want to use. So because he, there's no one to remove that child, there's no time, he doesn't take the other track, he runs over that innocent baby. Mm -hmm. Not because he wants to kill a baby, mm -hmm. you get my point, but to save the lives of the people on that train. It's mm -hmm. a tragedy. Mm -hmm. So I don't say that's abortion. That's, and, and let me tell you, of the, of the things we call abortion, mm -hmm. of the terminations of pregnancy, of these killing of the children in the womb, mm -hmm. less than 1% has anything to do with a topic or tubal pregnancies. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't consider, and we're not talking about that mm -hmm. today specifically. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about elective abortion <clears throat> where people have chosen, mm -hmm. they've made a moral decision about this child, yes. that the life of this child mm -hmm. is not worth going forward mm -hmm. as much as ABC. Mm -hmm. Whether it's because I, I'm not going to finish secondary school, mm -hmm. whether it's because I feel I can't support the child, mm -hmm. Um, and as the body of Christ, not only these children, but also those women, mm -hmm. we need to give them the support that they need. We need to minister th to them. Mm -hmm. But we can't, he, he, here's the problem. We can't let the fact that, that Jesus said, for example, mm -hmm. the poor ye have with ye always. And a lot of abortion is an issue of poverty. Many evils like thieves, uh, muggings, uh, many evils come from that stress of poverty, whether it's moral, mental, emotional poverty, mm -hmm. or the most common, the just the not having any money, mm -hmm. right? And so many evils proceed from that, but we don't justify those evils mm -hmm. because of that. Maybe a husband comes home very stressed with poverty, a wife comes home, maybe she provokes her husband, mm -hmm. maybe he beats her. We don't say now it's okay for him to beat mm -hmm. the wife because of poverty. Yes. I saw a husband um, two months ago mm -hmm. who actually uh, burned his wife to death mm -hmm. here in Kenya. It was in front page headlines throwing the uh, jiko mm -hmm. on her, and she burned to death. Now, I suppose that man was under stress, mm -hmm. you see? He could have been under a lot of stress. Yes. There are many excuses he could have. It's even possible, I'm not judging her, maybe she even said some things mm -hmm. over the years of their marriage mm -hmm. that made him feel provocation. I know he was drunk, so my point is, whatever provocation comes, mm -hmm. even from this woman in that instance, mm -hmm. there's no justification. The answer is never, never, never to justify the killing of the innocent person. Mm -hmm. And unlike a grown person who can speak and talk, at least maybe if someone kills me, like mm -hmm. if I annoyed you day mm -hmm. after day after day, year after year, <coughs> you might get so annoyed, you say, ah, you slapped me. You might even feel like you, you want to put a bullet in my head. Maybe let yeah. me give you a good example so sure. that maybe you can talk about it. Sure. Uh, during post-election violence, uh, there is a woman who was uh, raped. Mm. The guys who raped her, they mm. killed the husband mm. and the son mm. while she was watching. Mm. And they raped her, and she got pregnant. Mm. So it was so difficult for her to give birth, and she decided to abort. Mm. Maybe what can you say about such a case? That's because it was very painful. You're carrying a child. It was very painful. You're carrying a child, the child of the people who murdered your husband, yes. who murdered your family, and yes. forcibly raped you. You're not even mm -hmm. sure who exactly the father is, is the father. Yes. Yeah, probably. And that is, let me tell you, that is uh, not only 2007. Mm -hmm. It's November 2007, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's not only the post-election violence here in, in Kenya, but throughout world history, mm -hmm. tragically, as a result of sin, rape, especially during warfare, mm -hmm. which is what that was, a form of warfare. Yes. Rape is ubiquitous. I mean, it is throughout history. Mm -hmm. Every country has experienced it. Mm -hmm. Now, before I talk about this, let me say, once again, like uh, the issue of ectopic pregnancy, mm -hmm. Uh, once again, we're talking about less than 1% mm -hmm. of abortions mm -hmm. have anything to do with rape or incest. Mm -hmm. Those are the three things people normally bring up ectopic, mm -hmm. and it's good to address them, incest and rape. Now, addressing this, but it's important to point out and emphasize, 99% of abortions have nothing to do with any of those, mm -hmm. okay? But addressing this point, now I, I'm that woman, I'm carrying this, this baby in my womb who yes. was conceived by rapists, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Fundamentally, mm -hmm. we do not punish mm -hmm. the innocent for the crimes of the guilty. Mm -hmm. Let me say, because it bears repeating, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and, and let these words go through your mind, please. We do not punish the innocent for the crimes of the guilty. And I want to go beyond that. And so that, that child in the womb, mm -hmm. whoever his, whatever his parentage, whoever his genetic father is, he is a human being. He is made in the image of God. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, 
Beyond that, now think about this. I have a mental exercise for you, a mental and historical exercise. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say something. Don't slap me. Don't become angry. I'm going to say somewhere in your great-grandparents mm -hmm. and somewhere in my great-grandparents. Mm -hmm. If you go back two, three, four, five, however many generations, before you get anywhere near mm -hmm. Adam and Eve, there's rape. There's incest. Mm -hmm. Everyone, because rape and warfare has been so ubiquitous <coughs> throughout the history of the earth and the history of the tribes of humanity. Mm -hmm. We're all part of those tribes, right? Descended from Adam and Eve. There's been so much warfare, mm -hmm. so many empires. Mm -hmm. God's special ministry, his mm -hmm. special characteristic, mm -hmm. the way he foils the devil is like you see in the end of the book of Genesis, J uh, Joseph mm -hmm. speaking to his brethren. They tried to kill him. They sold him into slavery. They did many wicked things, just mm -hmm. like rape. Mm -hmm. Very wicked, abusive things to their own brother. And when he forgave them, Joseph said, these things you intended for evil. God intended them for good. Mm -hmm. My point is this, every one of us, there's no woman alive today, including you, there's no man alive today, including me, who is not at some point descended from an act of rape and incest. That means if that thing, does it justify? No. But it means in God's sovereign plan, if that thing had not happened, mm -hmm. there would be no Jonathan. Mm -hmm. There would be no Karen. Because God's, God's modus operandi mm -hmm. is to bring good oh. out of what Satan meant for evil. And the best example of that, Jesus, not only Joseph, but Jesus mm -hmm. Christ himself was mm -hmm. murdered murdered and pierced by his own people. So if you're a woman who's been raped, and I'm not judging the woman who had the abortion now, mm -hmm. she should repent, mm -hmm. God can forgive her, she's no, she's no worse than me. Mm -hmm. Our God is a forgiving God. Yes. But we can't excuse mm -hmm. to kill an innocent person for the crimes of the guilty. Mm -hmm. yeah, we can't do that. We need to remember that God has a purpose for that life. And if you're a woman who's been raped, please listen to my voice and to the voice of the Gospels. God himself became a man and was pierced. His body was penetrated by those nails mm -hmm. in his arms and his legs and by that spear in his side. God himself was penetrated. Okay, I'm talking serious here. Mm -hmm. God was not ashamed for our sake to save us. Mm -hmm. So if you're a woman who's been raped, <coughs> what you should do is recognize that mm -hmm. I have an opportunity instead of this violence which has which has fallen upon me mm -hmm. now am I going to be like a vampire no a vampire bites someone I know mm -hmm. vampires are fake but it's a good analogy a vampire bites someone now that person has a choice am I going to become a vampire or by the power of the cross mm -hmm. am I going to stop this violence right here mm -hmm. and let something good mm -hmm. come of it overcome the Bible says I can't remember the verse can you be not overcome. I know it's the New Testament. <laughs> Please excuse me. Be not overcome of evil, but instead overcome evil by doing good. Mm -hmm. I believe it's the Apostle Paul. Mm -hmm. Be not overcome by evil, but instead overcome evil by I doing could. good. And yeah. when you find that child is in your womb, mm -hmm. for those less than 1% which are pregnant from rape, don't kill that child. Give that child life. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mpenzi mtazamaji wa runinga ya BCI natumai kwamba tunazidi kuendelea vizuri na kama una lolote ambalo ungeweza kupenda kuchangia ama kuzungumzia maswali lolote kuhusiana na mada hii ya kwa vya mimba ama abortion unaweza pia ukatangushia jumbe fupi kupitia 0721105105 uh, maybe before we discuss about uh, these kids here sure. um, do you oppose all forms of birth controls contraceptives I, I do, and I know that this is a controversial subject for Christians. Mm -hmm. Generally, I do. Now, would I, let, me, let, let me rephrase this. Some of the things that are being called birth control, and by the way, there's, there's a famous pastor who, who did, addressing that, uh, that phrase, birth control. Mm -hmm. He said, okay, today I'm going to talk about birth control, but let me tell you, the advocates of birth control believe neither in birth mm -hmm. nor in control. Mm -hmm. These things are not designed for birth, mm -hmm. they're not designed for control. Mm -hmm. So those words are, are fake. Contraceptives. Mm -hmm. Now, there are those contraceptives which are abortifacient. Yes. Abortifacient. Mm -hmm. Those are being called contraceptives, but they have at least the potential mm -hmm. of creating an abortion. What mm -hmm. I mean by that is they're being called contraceptions, for example, the implant. Mm -hmm. And no one is on a high horse here. I've made mistakes. We are human beings, we make mistakes. Mm -hmm. The fact is, the implant in the arm. Mm -hmm. 
the pill mm -hmm. and the inject injections. Mm -hmm. They can cause an environment, okay, where fertilization does not occur. Mm -hmm. They also cause an environment where fertilization can still occur and ovulation can still occur mm -hmm. even while you're taking those things, mm -hmm. even while you're getting those injections. Mm -hmm. So now you can see you have, you have uh, conceived even on birth control, and I know you, I'm sure even you, I have no doubt you've heard stories of mm -hmm. people conceiving on birth control. Yes. Uh, chemicals. Mm -hmm. It happens. First of all, it happens, fertilization occurs, and in some cases, because you're taking that chemical, that child which has been conceived now cannot implant in the endometrium. Mm -hmm. The endometrium is that layer around the uterus which is very fertile, mm -hmm. becoming very rich for a child to implant. Mm -hmm and so that that baby can take root and grow. Now, if you're taking those chemicals mm -hmm. and that endometrium is, is becoming thin, it's like you've starved that child to death. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to put a guilt trip on people, but just to consider, what are these chemicals? What are these poisons we're putting in ourselves, mm -hmm. okay? I'm as guilty as anyone else. Of course, yes. the, it's the women who do it, but mm -hmm. the men collaborate, the men pressure. Mm -hmm. They say, I'm not ready, I'm not ready, I'm not ready, mm -hmm. right? So there's lots of guilt to go around. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is, some of the things being called contraceptive actually can create very early abortions. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, they can create an environment where these people, Marie Stokes, mm -hmm. and other people pushing these chemicals, mm -hmm. they don't tell you. A very good friend of mine, I won't, I won't even give her her nickname, I don't want to embarrass her. She was having those in her arm, mm -hmm. and uh, very recently, within the last year, her, it shifted in her arm. Her breasts swelled up mm -hmm. very big, and by the time she got to the hospital, one of them was so painful, mm -hmm. so big, it had to be removed. She's mm -hmm. left now with a, one prosthesis and one normal breast. Oh my. Yeah, and there are complications including cancer, mm -hmm. and which can result from the chronic use of these things. And those people will not tell you, they'll never tell you in mm -hmm. Marie Stopes clinics mm -hmm. that. And I want to talk more about, about that in a moment. Mm -hmm. One more point on this. Now, leaving aside these chemicals, which are poisons, they work when they do work because they are poisons. Mm -hmm. Also, you can have a child who is deformed mm -hmm. because it, the, the birth control didn't work, or who is sickly, or goes through a whole life mm -hmm. suffering because he made it, but he's never been quite he or she has never been quite normal mm -hmm. because of the effects of those, those poisons. Leaving those alone now, we go to barriers, other barrier form of contraception, like condoms. Mm -hmm. That doesn't cause abortion, okay? It's not reliable, necessarily, but would I rather, if someone is very diseased, would I rather they use a condom mm -hmm. than infect another person? Of course. Ideally, ideally, especially as people who profess Jesus Christ, we should not be engaging in sexual intercourse mm -hmm. outside of marriage, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But the world is a, a rough place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So would I prefer, no, I don't promote condoms, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, I would prefer someone not to infect another person to suffer their whole lives. Mm -hmm. Hey, does I'm telling you, yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. It's a very wonderful topic. Na kumbia mpenzi mtazamaji, ni mambo mazuri hapa mbayo tunazidi kujifunza. Assuming, let's say for example, um, there is a child who is maybe about 12 to 14 years mm -hmm. who has gotten pregnant. Mm -hmm. This is a child who, is, who cannot make a decision mm -hmm. on their own. So mm -hmm. uh, the parent decides to take the child to hospital maybe to get aborted. Mm -hmm. So between the child and the mother, who is responsible for the death of this child? When we're talking about, when we're talking about an, it's very difficult, when we're talking about a minor child, mm -hmm. let's say a, a girl, as you said, 12 years old, mm -hmm. could even conceive, okay? Um, she bears less responsibility, there's no doubt, mm -hmm. under, under the law, because she's a child. So it's the guardian and the caretaker who's responsible for that act. Mm -hmm. It is not justified. It is not, ask a physician, even the, um, uh, what is the title? There's a, there's a physician um, in, in general, the Surgeon General of the United States of America some mm -hmm. years back mm -hmm. said he knew of no instance where it was medically necessary mm -hmm. to kill that child. Mm -hmm. In other words, that girl is going to be traumatized. Mm -hmm. Let's say she is pregnant whether, whether through rape, and of course it's always rape, mm -hmm. even if they're consenting people when they're underage, right? That is what we call statutory rape. Nonetheless, if she finds she's pregnant, there's no going back. She's going to give birth either to a dead child, are you kidding me, mm -hmm. or a live child. Mm -hmm. 
And there's trauma that is never going to be erased from her. The question is, once she's pregnant at that young age, there's no going back. Mm -hmm. She's either going to live her life knowing emotionally, physically, that she gave birth to a child that is now dead. Mm -hmm. Or she's going to live her life whether she keeps the child, whether the grandmother helps to raise it, or whether they give the child for adoption. Knowing that at least something bad happened, but through the grace of God, something good came out. But the responsibility is with the parents. Mm -hmm. That's why we're talking about these things. These are embarrassing things, a bit, a bit stressful to talk about. But let me tell you, I, I'm, and thank you for bringing up these questions, because if we as Christians, mm -hmm. we're imperfect, we're sinners, but if we don't try to talk about them, those who are not Christians are coming to talk to our children, those NGOs, from United Nations who don't believe in God, mm -hmm. from USA, from UK, who are secular, who even are very much against God mm -hmm. and against the Bible, mm -hmm. they will come. They will talk to our children about these issues, mm -hmm. and they will give them the wrong perspective. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right. Pengine ni angazia mbili tatu ya maoni ambayo watu mweza kutongushia asubu hiya leo. Nina homa kidogo, lakini natumaya komba toko tunazidi kuendelea vizuri. Hmm. Niko Yulia nasema ya kwamba, I appreciate the speaker of today. I'm a pastor and chaplain of a school in Kitale. The verse you mentioned, brother, is in Romans 12, 22. Uh, God bless you, brother, as you teach. This is Reverend Abraham Kuski. Um, Naitua Lucy, uh, na niko na mimba ya miezi nne. Nataka kutoa mze wangu, amikata mtoto wa tatu. Nilipokea kama sipendi jeni. Mbaya, uh, Lucy is saying that she got pregnant hmm. and the husband doesn't want a third child. They have two children, mm -hmm. so they don't want the third one. So the husband is insisting that she should abort. Mm -hmm. Maybe you, you're going to address that issue. Okay, Lucy, first of all, look, look at this image. Take another look, please. By the time you know you're pregnant, almost 90% of pregnancies, by the time you know you're pregnant, the child is more developed than this, okay? This beautiful child here. I am a person. Now, Lucy, I want to talk serious with you and anyone in, in the situation that you're describing, please listen to me, Lucy. If you kill an innocent person, you have no part in Christ. Now God can forgive people for their sins, but not when we premeditate. It's just like that man who burned his wife to death and threw that uh, jiko at his wife. And maybe he said he was a Christian. I don't know if he's Catholic, Presbyterian, Pentecostal, what, what. But if he thinks he has a part in Christ and he doesn't repent of that, he's lying to himself. Okay, so we're talking about hell. We're talking about murdering an innocent person 100% in the image of God. Not 50%, not 2%, not 5%. Don't joke with yourself and with God that this is not a full human being and that you won't one day stand before God Almighty and answer for this. If your husband is so wicked, and I know so many are, I myself am a man, I know the depths we are, and the wickedness we are capable of. Go to someone who can counsel, whether it's a pastor, a priest, someone you trust, someone who has a mind of Christ. And no one who has a mind of Christ is going to tell you to do anything other than to defend that child. The preborn, let me say it again, I'll just keep repeating it. Let it burn, okay, into your mind. The preborn deserve the same defense as the born. You don't know what blessing may come from that child. If you pick up your cross and look for people, there are people, I know them right now, Anne Kyoko of Citizen Go in Nairobi. And I know a, a place in uh, Eldoret that helps women in crisis pregnancies. There are places you can go, you can get in touch with me, projectc.com, projectsee.com. Even the station can put you in touch with me. We can connect you to those people. There's no excuse. Okay. <coughs>
Uh, praise God, uh, Karen. God bless you so much for the program and thank you for enlightening us. I'm prepared to do the right thing as I plan to get married. I thank God for preserving me. Mm. Bishop Harrison taught uh, of this on Sunday and God bless you. This is Edda. Thank you very much, Edda. Wow. And maybe briefly we talk about uh, maybe these babies that are here. Yeah, these models, we love to go to um, primary and but mostly secondary schools. Mm -hmm. Uh, mostly around Nakuru here. We, we haven't gone to a lot of others. I'd love to. But these babies are mostly for the, the children to touch. And let me tell you, the young women really love them. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know if you can see through the camera, but they're very touchable. They're squishable. They almost feel like they're alive, mm -hmm. you know. And, and, and the girls normally, they squeal, they laugh, they love touching them. This one, um, 10 or 11, actually 11 weeks, 11 weeks. Mm -hmm. So this is first trimester bigger than the baby on the picture we were looking at that said, I am a pasan. And I want to emphasize, as we look here, the end of the second trimester. Mm -hmm. And most abortions, mm -hmm. sorry, yeah, most abortions are occurring mm -hmm. in between this baby mm -hmm. and this baby here. Mm -hmm. Most ab abortions are occurring a bit bigger, surgical abortions a mm -hmm. bit bigger than this and smaller than this one. Mm -hmm. Now, as you move through the second trimester, mm -hmm. this is the very end of the second trimester right mm -hmm. here. I believe uh, 26 weeks, mm -hmm. so actually getting into the third trimester. Mm -hmm. And now the very end of the third trimester, this baby here, very big, very heavy, mm -hmm. feeling almost like a real baby. I feel like I'm supposed to support the neck when I hold it up. But it's just to give a representation, again, to give a voice, to give something tangible so that we humanize and we, mm -hmm. we emphasize the personhood of that child in the womb who can't speak for himself or can't speak for herself to give someone something to touch mm -hmm. so they know this is not just some of these abortionists you know they make cash mm -hmm. good cash money mm -hmm. by doing these abortions and which is technically a felony here in Kenya mm -hmm. but the way they say they'll say to the girl oh never mind just come take this pill or you come I do this procedure mm -hmm. very violent procedure by the way mm -hmm. ripping the arms off mm -hmm. ripping the legs off ripping the head off this baby mm -hmm very violent mm -hmm. and they say but don't worry don't worry you see jolly it is just a blob of nothing mm -hmm. but do you see here a blob mm -hmm. do you see nothing yeah. see a human being yes, yeah. a, a person mm -hmm. a person so again we're emphasizing the pre-born children deserve the same defense mm -hmm. that you want and that I want mm -hmm. Jesus said uh, do unto others as you would have them do unto you if you're in a position mm -hmm. of vulnerability mm -hmm. let's say you had an accident you're in the hospital. Would you want someone to come and, and give you poison? Because you can't defend yourself. Yeah. Use the golden rule, mm -hmm. which Jesus gave us. We're, we're all going to stand before God. Mm -hmm. We were all once this small. Yes. We were all, at one time in our lives, mm -hmm. this vulnerable. Again, mm -hmm. if we reach old age, mm -hmm. we're coming to a point of vulnerability mm -hmm. where we're depending on other people. So the whole dignity of humanity mm -hmm. revolves around this. And let me tell you, this is a very important point. Mm -hmm. These other nations are coming from the West with NGOs, <coughs> with uh, UN uh, Family Planning, mm -hmm. uh, Planned Parenthood USA, and the biggest one in Africa is Marie Stopes. Mm -hmm. They're pushing this abortion. Mm -hmm. It's not by accident. There's a reason why they mm -hmm. are doing this. Mm -hmm. They are doing this because of a philosophy called eugenics mm -hmm. and it's a fake science that was very popular around the turn of the, the uh, 19th to the 20th century. Mm -hmm. People like Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood, and Marie Stopes. By the way, she was a woman. Many people even think that maybe she was, they don't know she's a woman. I, I met one person who thought she was a Catholic saint. It's not true. Mm -hmm. She didn't believe in God. She was a eugenicist. Eugenics, eugenics excuse me, is a fake science that says that the human race mm -hmm. being divided by tribes some of the tribes are on the top layers of evolution mm -hmm. okay I'm not advocating this I'm explaining it on the top layers of evolution and these people believed it was like Europeans maybe white-skinned people and at the bottom Africans Arabs are you getting my point mm -hmm. so they have an agenda the eugenics agenda is to cull the human herd mm -hmm. as though we were cattle they think that there's no God and so it's their responsibility to be like the Hudsman mm -hmm. and to choose which tribes should have less babies and which tribes should have more. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the philosophy of eugenics. That's why Marie Stopes, and Marie Stopes was a woman who was a pioneer mm -hmm. around the 19 teens. My grandmother was born 1917. That was the heyday of Marie Stopes when she was founding that organization. And it is not by accident that they have 
put most of their resources into Africa. They're the largest abortion provider in Africa, and they fooled people mm -hmm. because they are deliberately trying to kill your children because they hate African people. Are you hearing me? Yes. Marie Stopes hates African people, and I'm not judging you. There are most pe many people who, who, who work for Marie Stopes, they don't even know. It's just a job, it's mm -hmm. just a work. They've not, they've not been told these things. Mm -hmm. Sure. But now you're being told, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And don't take my word for it. Do the research yourself. Mm -hmm. Google is there. If you even have access to a smartphone, mm -hmm. you can see these things I'm telling you, they are the truth. And any nation that is seduced, this is a seduction we're talking mm -hmm. about. They say, oh, it's for women's rights, women's health, mm -hmm. exactly as Satan came in the Garden of Eden, not first to Adam, mm -hmm. but he came to the woman, didn't yes, he? that's true. Didn't he? That's what they are doing. They're coming in the name of freedom. You'll be like a god. You'll be equal to men. You see these men, they can misbehave sexually and run away. No consequences. You can be like that too if you do abortion. <coughs> wow. Are there crime charges for abortive women? There are, and for the doctors who perform <laughs> abortions. Uh, I don't know the statistics on how often they, they do it, but it, it is a felony. Mm -hmm. I, it carries years in prison for the doctor. Mm -hmm and for the woman, potentially, mm -hmm. potentially. I, I don't know the leeway the judge has. I'm not an expert in Kenya law. I have read the statute. Mm -hmm. The trouble is this. Mm -hmm. I hesitate even to bring this up, but the Constitution, okay, these groups came with money. Groups like Marie Stopes, groups like IPASS from my country, USA. IPASS, the only, they, they're based in Nairobi, but they're actually based in North Carolina, USA, and all this money is pouring mm -hmm. from these eugenicists mm -hmm. into Africa especially Nairobi as the hub of all of East Africa to promote abortion. And through that power and influence, they were able to put a clause in the Constitution which sounds good, but has actually created a loophole that is allowing some of these satanic abortion organizations to do abortions here in Kenya. So yes, it is a felony. Yes, the Constitution says life begins at conception. But the problem is we need to close this loophole because life beginning at conception, there's no legal weight to that. Mm -hmm. Even my fingernail is alive. Mm -hmm. You get my point? When I cut my hair, that's a human life, but it's not a person. Mm -hmm. You get the distinction. It's a human, it's life, but it's not a person. Mm -hmm. For the law, the key is personhood. We need something like an act of parliament mm -hmm. or a constitution maybe a constitutional amendment, and I'm not a legal expert, mm -hmm. but I've talked with some who are, and they have told me, uh, especially uh, uh, Advocate Mwangi here in, here in town, who is a constitutional expert, a very seasoned lawyer, mm -hmm. Advocate Peter Raiden Mwangi, and other advocates have told me that what has to happen to truly protect the lives of these children is we have to recognize their personhood, their God-given right to personhood. Mm -hmm. That word is not there, and because there's a loophole in the Constitution that says if the health of the mother is at risk, a medical professional mm -hmm. can do an abortion. Mm -hmm. That is so broad, and these groups fought to put that clause in there because they knew if they're just given that loophole, mm -hmm. they can do abortions, and it's happening. Mm -hmm. It's happening. They're, they're putting up clinics funded by money, so this is a genocide. Mm -hmm. It's very wicked. Let me tell you, a nation that doesn't protect its children mm -hmm. is engaging in human sacrifice through abortion. Mm -hmm. And when you engage in human sacrifice, all the curses of God, all the curses of the Bible mm -hmm. come down on your nation. Mm -hmm. I know it because I've come from the USA. We are under those curses now. And they are, t they are doing their bloody, wicked work. And I don't want, my children are Kenyan. My daughters are, are native citizens of Kenyan. My wife is a native citizen of Kenya. I don't want to see that happen. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. I don't want to see what happened in my country that, where God withdrew and is withdrawing his blessing. I don't want to see his blessings withdrawn from the people of East Africa mm -hmm. and of Kenya. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me? Yeah. I don't want us to do it. So we've got to step up and be vocal for these children. Mm -hmm. Say, I am a person. Mm -hmm. And, and, and talk to our MPs and talk to the governors and talk to the president mm -hmm. and the DP and, and, and give these children the voice that they don't have unless we give it to them. Otherwise, God steps in mm -hmm. and we, we don't want God to step in, okay? We want God in our lives for blessing mm -hmm. and not cursing, but when we kill his children, the curses will come. Mm -hmm. Human sacrifice from the time of the Old Testament up to the New Testament up to today 
human sacrifice causes, the, Moses says, causes the land to vomit out the inhabitants. That's why he warned the people of Israel in Leviticus. He said, these Canaanites, remember the Canaanites? That I drove out of the land of Canaan. It was called the land of Canaan, named after them. I drove them out in front of you. Why? Because they did human sacrifice. They killed their children. They sacrificed their children to idols and they committed sexual abomination. And then Moses said very clearly, more than one place, God says, don't do what the Canaanites did or the land will also vomit you out. Wow. There's so many people who have aborted. Mm. Maybe some of them did that before they got born again. Of course. Some of them have done that even. They are born again mm. and they're still doing that. Mm. Maybe uh, you can talk to them. Mm. Is there hope? Yeah, can God forgive them? Absolutely there's hope. Mm. <laughs> yes, there's hope. Those things, there's a place, again, maybe the pastor who helped me. I'm good with some Bible passages, mm -hmm. but I don't remember the references. But mm -hmm. there's a place where Paul talks about, I think it's in Corin one of the Corinthians. Mm -hmm. He talks about those people who were coming into the church from those pagan religions. Mm -hmm. Some of them were uh, prostitutes in temples. Mm -hmm. I know they were involved in abortions. He doesn't mention that specifically, but there's no doubt. Mm -hmm. Male prostitutes, female mm -hmm. prostitutes. Paul lists many things they were. Some of them were gays, mm -hmm. okay, uh, engaging in sodomy. Mm -hmm. Paul says, I don't care what you are. You're a new creature in Christ. Mm -hmm. You get my point. Mm -hmm. Old things have passed away. Now I'm paraphrasing. All things have become new. That's the life we have in Christ, okay? Whether we're in prison, whether we're dying, when we're born again into the body of Christ, through the blood of Christ, we become a new creature, amen? amen. A new creature, a new creature. Now, once we've become a new creature, it's for us not to crucify Jesus again. We need to leave off these things. People sometimes still backslide. They struggle with uh, old temptations. They fall into sin. We are told if we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen? Wow. But one thing we cannot do, it's important to say, I have, at, in the U.S., I have seen over and over and over women at abortion clinics where I would go to try to counsel, to convince them not to do it. And I remember uh, one black American lady, but I've seen it more than once. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, sweetheart, she said, I already asked Jesus to forgive me. As she's going into the abortion clinic to kill that baby, she said, I done already talked to Jesus. He done forgave me. So don't you worry about nothing. It doesn't work that way. Are you hearing me? It doesn't work that way. That man who wanted to kill his wife, or if, or if a woman wanted to kill her two-year-old child, you can't go to Jesus and say, Jesus, I'm about to kill my husband. I'm about to put poison in my husband's chai. Jesus, I'm about to kill my wife with a panga. Forgive me now for what I'm going to do tomorrow. May God forbid. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. Wow, wacha tupate kibao kimoja tena alafu kisha tukirejea atakuwa natueleza pengine kuna wale watu ambao wangependa kumfikia kuna wale ambao wangependa uh, kujua mali ambapo wanapatikana mambo kama yale tutakuwa tunayazungumzia tukitamatisha hivyo basi usiende mbali. Alright, kabisa iko mmoja ambaye anasema ya kwamba machaplain at AIC keep KK girls are serving 642 girls. May I kindly request him to come and speak to my girls next time. This is Reverend Kuzgi. Asante sana uh, Reverend Kuzgi. Mtumishi mm, hapa atakuwa anahakikisha kwamba anatupatia nambari zake za simu, pengine email na vitu kama vile ambavyo tutakuwa tunaweza kumpata. Nitakuwa ni baraka sana. Morning Karen, I'm so blessed by this speaker today. I also used uh, contraceptives but never knew that I had already conceived and as a result got a miscarriage. Uh, should I also have to repent uh, for this because it was unintentional? It was unintentional. You didn't know what you were doing. I'm hearing what you're saying. Let's repent together. Okay, I'm repenting along with you. Mm -hmm. It's not. Is it hard to repent? If we have a humble heart, it's not hard. Okay. Let's repent. All right. Mm. Uh, hi, Karen. Thanks for inviting this speaker uh, for his uh, informative information to all ages. His mission is blessed. This is Rachel. Uh, hi, Karen. Thank you very much. Uh, greet Jonathan and tell him he's such an anointed person. May God take him far. This is indeed uh, okay. All right, nimpata ujumbe wako Jessica. Iko mwingine anasema it's such a wonderful topic for the youths and we thank God because they are at home schools were closed. This mm. is Milka from Kitale. Mm. Thank you very much Milka. May God bless you so so much. Uh, maybe um, 
your last words before we finish? I'm afraid I'm going to forget to give that email address. Mm -hmm. So let me, for those who want to contact me, for the chaplain and, and others who need to contact us, mm -hmm. at Project C, it's projectcsee.com. And my email address, j-o-n-a-o-t-o-o-l-e at gmail.com. That is Jonah O'Toole, with an E at the end, at gmail.com. J-o-n-a-o-t-o-o-l-e at gmail.com. You can contact me there. I will respond to you. Okay? You're very welcome. As we close, let's talk about this issue of sexuality. Let's just touch on it. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Because we know these, these, small, these uh, small children are not coming from nothing, right? They're coming from sexual intercourse, right? Mm -hmm. And the sexual revolution uh, that's been occurring over the past few hundred years, beginning really with the French Revolution in the se late 1700s. Mm -hmm. uh, it was pushed uh, further by the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia in, in the 19-teens, when Russia was overtaken by communism. And then in the USA and UK in the 1960s, there was a sexual revolution in the Western world. Um, it's produced a lot of bad fruit, okay? It's removed the covering from our, our daughters. Mm -hmm. It's really exposed a lot of people to a lot of pornography and a lot of confusion. That's where so many of these unwanted, by the way, there are no unwanted. If you don't want those babies, as Mother Teresa said, I want them. Mm -hmm. You're kidding me. But these so-called unwanted pregnancies are coming in large part from our own sexual misbehavior. Mm -hmm. And it's for us as we begin to restore, as the Bible says, restore the old paths, go back to the traditions of our fathers. If they weren't good, if they were unbiblical, like things like FGM, okay, we can abandon them, all right? But most of the traditions, even as Africans or Europeans of our fathers, they were good. God says, don't move the boundaries of your ancestors. It's a wicked and rebellious thing. Honor your father and mother. So we need to go back before those generations that did this sexual revolution and go back to protecting our daughters, protecting our sisters, protecting our wives from sexual exploitation, even by their own husbands, we're seeing. Not by strangers, but in many cases, it's their own husbands and their own boyfriends to whom they are consenting, who are turning them into prostitutes, okay? But these are people made in the image of God. Husbands, don't turn your wives into a prostitute, okay? Don't make your marriage something dirty. God says that the coming together of husband and wife is like Christ in the church. It's fruitful. It is beautiful. It's not something to be mocked. And it's not something to be provided. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Jonathan, for coming. Thank you. And maybe you can uh, give them your email address again for yeah, maybe you. those who are not alert and attentive sure. so that they can write it down. Let me give you, thank you for having me. J-O-N-A-O-T-O-O-L-E at gmail.com. Please send me an email. I would love to hear from you. Jonah O'Toole at gmail.com. Okay. Thank you. Asante sana basi kwa kuweza kutazama kipindi hiki uh, cha Sabalheri mahojiano yetu ya siku ya leo lakini unajua kipindi bado kinaendelea tukiwa pamoja na mwenzangu Kamiti lakini kwanza kabisa kabla tuondoke ni kukumbusha chemsha bongo yetu ya siku ya leo na chemsha bongo yetu ya siku